Hi everyone, Emma here. I'm so excited to show you how to complete this lovely wreath earring. So yesterday we did the circle, so the wreath part of it, and I did it in some blue colors just to help you see the beading part of it because this is so dark. So now we're going to I'm going to show you how to do the candle so there's let me get the light better there we go so we're gonna do the candle with the beautiful flame which is a four millimeter bicone I'm using um, Swarovski crystal you can use uh, Preciosa they're beautiful too um, and then we're gonna add the holly leaves so these are I used um, olivine colored mini duos but if you have a different color green that's fine you can use it and these are 11 opaque red uh, check seed beads so they have a bit of a rounder look to them but you can use whatever you have for the candle I'm using these are delicas 11 delicas and they are transparent and I think they're matte, actually, now that I look at them. They have a, a bit of a flat look to them. You're also going to need a few supplies for the ear hook. So a lovely set of ear hooks you need. Again, use whatever you have. Um, you're going to need a small bead. Let me tilt the camera here so you can see. You're going to need a small bead gold bead to go right here and that was just to bring the threads together so that they go around the ear wire this ear wire that I'm using is a closed ring so when I have it like that I tend to prefer to put a jump ring but because this is so delicate I don't want to keep adding a jump ring here and a jump ring there and you have to change the orientation so if this goes from side to side, you might have to add a second jump ring. I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to put the thread right through. So that's why, and that's why you need a, a tiny bead to uh, pull your threads together. Um, I'm using a six millimeter Preciosa red pearl. And these lovely bead caps that I got from BB Craft. Let's see if we can pick them up. Like that. These are really lovely. But again, use whatever you have. And you don't have to put a bead cap. I just thought I wanted to have the earring part separate from the wreath. So the wreath looks very retro. And then the earring part kind of glams it up a bit. So... You, you see where I'm heading with this? So let's go ahead and start the candle. Um, I'm using some Nymo thread, the same color as the bead color. And I did find, let me show you my other sample, that you kind of needed to do that. Because if you look here, this here I used some... Um, these are actually 15 no seed beads. This, these ones here, these are... 11 0. I'm just double checking. Yeah, these are 11 0. These I use 15 0, but they're silver lined, and I was using green thread. You can kind of see in certain spots either the silver or the, the thread, and I just felt like it, it was too much of a distraction. I wanted it to look like a real candle. So, Again, all of these are just suggestions. You use what you have on hand. And you know what? Sometimes beautiful designs come out of that. There's so many times I try to, maybe I see something online and I think, oh, let me try that. And then I realize, oh, I don't have that supplies. So I use what I have and then it turns out completely different and beautiful. So let's bring the camera down towards my hands so it doesn't take a lot 
This is peyote stitch. We're going to do a strip of it and then we're going to zip it together. Um, I'm going to put a bit more. I don't think it needs that much, but. Okay. So where's my thread? And I'm using a size 12 needle. And I, you could probably use a, a larger needle if you need to. Um, we are going to take this thread and go through our beading when we add it. So you kind of want a smaller needle to kind of get through the little spots in this. Try and stretch this. Not so much that you need to stretch your thread, but I find these spools as it gets down to the bottom, the thread keeps that circular shape and um, it gets knotted pretty easy. So you need a stop bead. Let's grab one of these green beads. Like that. And we're going to go, you're going to leave just a little tail so that you can um, weave it back in. So go back up your stop bead. Let me see if I can move this light. It's kind of in my way. Always. <laughs> Let's move that out of the way. Let's move these up and these so I can. You are going to start with eight beads on your peyote. And let me tell you, I tried six and I tried ten. And you know what? For this design, this measurement, and a four millimeter bicone, it works perfectly so that you can thread everything on and it sits nicely. So, what do we have? Four, one, two, three, four. I'm looking at these. Look, they're different colors, these beads. I <laughs> I got these from Art Beads. <laughs> That's, you know what, who knows why they're different colors. So, again, this is peyote, so we're just going to come back. We're going to start our first bead. You just do how it works for you to start your peyote, but I'm going to I'm gonna show it anyway. Um, for people who've never done it before, this could be a way to discover peyote so you put one seed bead on your needle here's your thread so you're going to skip the first bead i'm just going to move it up so you have an idea of what i'm talking about so just move it up a bit skip the first bead you're going to go down through the second bead like that and pull your thread through and i'm going to Bring it down. This is a little bit delicate to work with because there's, you know, only eight beads on your thread there. So we want it to sit, to have like this T shape. So those two sit side by side. And let me enlarge this a bit. Maybe that'll help. Okay, next bead. We're coming out of this bead here. We're going to skip this one and we're going to go through the next one. I have noticed that there's um, people showing how to do peyote that they hold, when you do your start, they hold it a different way. And it looks like it's a lot easier. So maybe I'll have to watch some more videos and practice. What do you think? So let's get our second bead on here and pull it snug so now you have your two there and just do that all the way down so you're coming out of this bead you're going to skip that one you're going to go from the top down through the next bead i'm just going to hang on to everything so that my thread doesn't just make sure it didn't hook over my beads there pull that in Get 
them sitting side by side. It doesn't, it's a lot easier to do this by yourself. So it's just with the cameras and everything, I have to move my hands around things. Ah, that's got to go up more. That's why it's, let me put this and pull it tight. These should sit side by side. It's just being fussy here. Okay. So they'll, they'll straighten out in a second. Grab your next one. So you're coming out of that bead. You're going to skip that one. You're going to go through the bottom one. Pull that through. This should straighten out that other one there. So that's, that's your first row. You're going to do five rows, which is probably 10. If you look at the top, you're going to count five beads along here. So that's how many rows. But if you look at the bottom, you're going to do five at the bottom as well. And then we're going to zip it up. So this would be your first row. Let's pick up a bead. Coming out of this bottom single bead, we're going to go into this one here. And this will definitely straighten it out now. See, like that. Now we're just going to put a bead in every slot. My thread here. See what I mean about the curling thread? I, I guess you could wax it. That would take that curl out. So place it in between the sticking out beads. And let me um just cinch my stop bead and that should straighten out those beads a little. There. Okay. Pick up your next bead and put it in that slot. Move that out of the way. Okay. Let's get this this way here. So now we're going to come down. And we're going to put the beads in these little slots. Keep going. And you can turn it the other way if it's easier to hold on to. <laughs> the um, camera's distorting my view. And put one in here. Oh, you silly thread. Let's put this down. Came out. You know what? I'm going to grab some wax and wax that. That should stop the curling. I should have done did that at the beginning. Just look at that, how it straightened out that line. Let's get this one. Straight out too. And put this back on. Okay. Get your next bead. I'm going to move these over here. So I don't move my hands so you can see. Okay. So the thread's coming out of this bead. Oh, did that come off? Go down through this next one. And watch that doesn't hook. Okay. There, we're going to put one in here. That. It is a bit like it's tiny, so 
it's a little bit trying to manage to hang on to so if you pay attention here we've got one two three so we need two more beads on the top but if you look at the bottom there's only two now we're going to add one right now so that'll be three just remember the magic number is five and that will give you enough to create a little tube kind of like a toggle if you like to do toggles for your clasps just put that in there like that it is very fast if you're doing it yourself you're not trying to do this on camera you know what there's days when it all runs smoothly and then there's days it's like the thread doesn't want to behave and i think the more you try to correct things it, uh, it just doesn't work out but these are so lovely so thank you everybody for all the wonderful comments and it's exciting the um video got a lot of views for you know less than 24 hours so it's kind of nice these are super simple you can do these right now you can start making these now you don't need a lot of beads so if uh, you can use like colors that you have left over that you might not have enough to make a bracelet but you can do earrings and you can give them as gifts or have them ready for a party you're going to. That bead there came loose from this spot. So not a big deal. Take your thread and pull it back in. And that's because I pulled this way with my thread rather than this way. Always work towards your, your bead work like that okay so let's count again we've got one two three four and we've got four on the top so two more rows there Oops, there's two there. Just gonna pull that snug. That. And I'm gonna pull this back on. This thread's coming off the needle. Let's go through here. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five at the top. We have one, two, three, four. So we need this last row and that'll be it. We'll fold it and zip it together. That. Oops. Through here. You know what I should try to do? I don't know if people have seen these. They were old fashioned lights, probably from the 50s. And it was lights that you would put in your window. So they were, they looked like candles, only it was three candles in a row. And they were made from like that. Um, kind of a, a it, they're plastic but and they they they're on like a stand they look really cool 
but very retro. Okay, so that's it. We're done for this. What we're going to do is we're going to fold it like that. Okay, so what you have, if you look at, let me flatten it out again so you can see. So this one is an indent, but on the other side, it's a sticking out. So we can take our thread and hook it into this one and it will fit in that slot. Then we go through this one, which is a sticking out, will fit in this lovely little slot there. So basically we're going to bring our thread through this, come down this one, come down this one, come down this one, and go back and forth and that will zip it up. So let's fold it together like that. So bring our thread and you can do, there's quick ways to do it. You can take your needle and and do it on an angle so that you get both beads, but I'm going to do it separate so you can see. So I'm going to connect these two at the top. Let me see if there's a way you can see this like that. Okay. So you're going to bring your thread from this bead you're going to go to this next sticking out bead. And you can zip it without pulling it tight. So now you're going to go across to the next, the other side, sticking out bead. What I was going to say is you can do this, like leave it a little bit loose like I am, like this. And when we get to the bottom, you just pull it all and it'll all cinch in nice and tight. And just round it so that it's go down through the next on the other side sticking out bead let me know if this looks as small as it feels to me <laughs> leave it to emma to show you a design where something's so minuscule then go through the other side Like that. And then go through the sticking out one on the other side. Like that. Then through the bottom one on the other side. Okay. Now I'm just going to pull my stop bead out a bit to get it out of the way. So our thread is coming out of this bead. We want to connect the bottom bead here like this, like that. And I'm just gonna roll it in my fingers and pull my thread. And actually we should probably pull it before we come up the other side, just so that the thread is going straight down. So I'm gonna take that side of that strand that we worked on and I'm just gonna roll it to get it nice and round so that it doesn't look flat. Like that and then pull this thread through. You can go back up it again if you want. It's really not necessary. Like, okay, so we're going to keep this thread on because we're going to use this to get to weave it back onto the or weave it onto the um, the wreath. So what we're going to do is take the, the needle off. Or if you have another needle, just use the other needle. Take that off. Let's move this back over here. So, see what I was saying? We didn't need that much of this stuff. Move those over so they don't get mixed in with the, the round beads. Take your stop bead off. And hold on to your work so it doesn't pull your. That's weird. This is. Oh, you know what's happened is the thread split when I came through. So it. Um, you can kind of see a sh thread. So I'm going to pull it out from the bottom. Usually you can just slide your bead off. But my needle pierced the thread. You can kind of see it there. So let's pull that out there. And take that off okay 
and we're just going to take this thread and weave it in. You don't have to go very far. It's not structural, so it's not a big deal. Just wherever you can find a spot. And because it's so tiny, you don't need to um, tie a knot in it or anything. So we're coming out of this bead. We're going to go into the next bead and go on an angle. So we'll go through a few beads like that. You can kind of see where the needle's going through. Pull it through. Oh, it doesn't like that. I must have gone through some thread. It's very finicky. Now, if you're concerned about that thread being there, you can go through a few more to the top. I think that's what I'll do. Go on an angle around, and then we'll cut that off. You can weave back and forth. It's really not necessary. This is not going anywhere. It's so tiny. Okay, so there's what you have. Now let's come to the other side. Put her needle back on like that. See if it'll catch there we go. It's all twisty twisty of course. No Okay, so now we had just hooked those two together. So let's, I'm going to bring my thread. It, it came up this way and down. I am just going to go cross over here like this. Pull it. And that thread will hide between those two beads. And I'm just looking to make sure everybody's in place where I want it. Okay. So now let's. It. I'm going to use my green thread as my marker for the midpoint so that I don't have to move it around but if it's somewhere else not a big deal just weave your thread through so we'll just leave that there so we are going to place this in the middle here like that so take your thread your red thread and pick up, it doesn't matter what bead you do, this this part of weaving both the leaves and this part in, place it where you want it and whatever beads works for you, works for you. So let's see. Let's go to this one and then we'll go through two beads and turn around and come back up. So like that, and up on this side. Um, no, you know what, I think I'm going to come over, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of this bead and up through here. So let me go through this one down here, like that. Then go up one here. Um, you know what? I think I'm surprised at. Yeah, you can see the red thread. Not a big deal because the leaves are going to go in front of it. So that's why I wasn't worried about it. I was looking at it going, that's not right. That's wrong. Who is this Emma person? <clears throat> okay, so that thread, we want to go up through one of these beads and maybe pass through a few of the delicas on there, like that. 
and you pull it tight, it comes down. Now, of course, we have that sitting at the front, like through those front ones. So now what we're going to do is bring our thread. You can either poke your thread through the candle, or you can follow the beads through on the other side and thread it so that you have it attached to the back side. Because if you look, it's not attached. So you want it to stand up is what I'm getting at. So, and actually I'm looking at this. You could take a look at what you have for your beads. When you do the middle part, it m may not sit exactly in the middle. So you have more of the 50 nose showing. So if that's how you like it to look, make this your front. And you can see you don't see it as much on this side. Make this your back. That hides the, the red thread as well. So like there's lots of choices here. So I think I'm just going to poke my needle through. Just wiggle it through like that. And I'm going to come back down a few beads. I'm just pulling it so it's nice and snug. So I'm right here. I'm going to go through these two beads like that. And then we'll weave through the wreath to get that in place. So let's... Um, Let me see where's the best spot to come through. Let's go through this green 15 0 and on an angle through two of the 11 0s like that. And we'll come back up. And you can see it's already, look, it's, it's staying in place on its own. Again, not a big deal because I think for this one, actually, I didn't secure it that way. All I did was I went through the middle, added the bicone, and went up and down a few times and it held it in place. But I felt like there was a bit of, you know, wiggling around. So this is nice to have it firmly in place. So let's find where I might go through the wreath. And just pick up one of these delicas here, like that. There. Okay. So now I'm going to bring my needle in through the middle of the... Actually, let's go through here. Go through a few beads first just to anchor that. Like that. Okay, so now I'm going to go in here and bring my needle through the candle through the middle. Okay, it doesn't want to do it. Let's go through the beads till we get to the top. So just place your needle through the beads on an angle because that's how the beads are set with peyote. Okay, I'm going to pull that back down there. And there's one more bead here. Okay, now I'm going to go through the tube like that, bring it out through the bottom. And I'm going to hook on a middle bead down, say this one here. Okay, and I am going to go through the candle. This time I'm going to add the crystal in place. I 
I think rather than going through these uh, peyote stitches, you should probably just go through the tube. This seems like a lot more difficult than it needs to be. It's very simple. Okay. Let's move that thread out of the way. And let's grab our yellow crystal for our flame. Put it on there. Like that. And try to center this. So let's do this bead here. Like that. There. And try and get that in the center. Yeah, I don't know if I like it through that bead. It doesn't look right to me. So let's go back out. Let me... Let's go in through this one, but on the left side. So let me turn it a bit. So in through this bead here. Like that. there and we're going to go back down the crystal in the candle like that you can go up and down as many times as you want um, we'll just we'll hook here we'll go up and tie off you don't have to go through a lot it's not structural so it's not like it's holding anything in place I just want, I like to get the, the crystal sitting inside the tube. There. Okay, so let me go through this one here. And up through the candle. There we go. And through the crystal, out through the crystal. Keep that snug. There. And we're going to weave this in a few beads. And again, if you don't like that thread showing, you can use the green but depending on what side you use it's not going to matter what you're going to see I kind of like this side better so let's do come through here and I'm going to pick up a thread bridge Wrap it around once, pull your thread through, weave it through these beads, set your knot into those beads so you can't see it, and cut this off. So at a distance, you really can't see that thread, but you know me, <laughs> I'm like, so this side looks like the more rounded side. So you might, that this is going to get covered. It's hard to say. I kind of like this side better, but I think we should do it this way. So we're going to put our leaves. So grab your thread and put your needle back on we are going to get our thread into position probably 
the beads the way they sit if you look at it here we want to attach the two first mini duos in this section so if you look if you line it up with your needle it's lined up with the candle so we're going to take our thread and move it over to that so go through two beads here like that pick up two mini duos bring them down then you're going to go so you're coming out of this bead here you're going to go down to another bead probably this crystal here and we're going to go through the next bead as well on an angle so we're going to come back and reset those so don't worry we're just basically putting them into position till we know where we want everything so pick up your next two mini duos and we're coming out of this bead let's go through this bead and just that bead let's see if we can line these up with the candle so they're going to sit about there or something like that. Yeah, so that should work. So let's go back through the first two we put on. Just flip them over. So you're going to go through the same hole like that. And let's bring those up a little. I'm going to go through this same hole that I came up through on the other side because I want those to sit close to the candle to the top so it's just a matter of you know going back through them till you have a position you like okay so I'll just go through that one more time to oh, go through both of them And we'll try and cinch them in nicely like that there so let's take a look through that bead and I'm gonna go through the next one I'm gonna try and set up the other two as well Go through those two and go through this bead here. Like that. These are going to go here. We'll get them straightened out in a sec. So now what we want to do is we want to add our third one on each end of those two mini duos. So we want to bring yourself through, get to a bead that will line up with the second hole on that. So if you pull your bead down and look, so let's go through this bead here and just that one. I'm going to come through this hole. It looks like a bit of a mess right now, but trust me, they will line up. You could essentially do them, put them together before you add it to the wreath and then attach it to, if that makes more sense to you. So you can see how they're going to sit. So let's um, find a bead to go through here go through this one like that okay i'm going to 
and go make my way to the other side. Go through a couple of beads. Go to the other side. And that will probably do it this hole here. So go through your first one, but your second hole, the open hole. Pick up your mini duo. Go through the other mini duo. Create that pointed leaf effect effect like that. And let's see, let's go through this. Let me see here. Yeah, we should go through this hole here. There, like that. That's tight. I am going to go through those same beads again. Go through all three holes. And my thread's coming off. Go through this hole. There. Like that. So let's find a bead. So we want to anchor this end in. But we also want to take this and go through that hole. So let's, let's go through these two beads here. Like this. There. Go through the tip of that bead and just gently bring it down like that. I'm going to go through this hole here and this one here. And now I'm just going to cinch these back up. And go to the other side, do the same. Like that. Let's see what we have here. Let's go through this one. I just squeeze those three together. Let's get our... I feel like maybe we should put our berries on there. I just squeeze those together to get the shape. So yeah, I think we can do our berries and we'll put this, attach that one as well. So to put your berries, you are coming out of that one bead. You're going to pick up a bead. Go through the other side. Like this. Just kind of wiggling my needle through that hole there. That's kind of stuck. There, like that. And it'll pull it together. Take another bead. You're coming into this hole. You're going to go through this hole. And but don't go don't pass through both. Come through the middle. Like that. And you can just nudge them together. You see how lovely that's. Oh, these are this is so satisfying. <laughs> okay, now you're going to pick up three of those. 11 o opaque red they look like little holly berries so you're coming out of this bead here in the middle you're going to go through the one on the other side and up and that's going to crisscross like that let me just squeeze these guys so now pick up that berry that we added on earlier like that You're going to go through the middle bead that's loose because I didn't pull it tight. So now we're going to pull it tight. 
we're going to pick up the one below like that pull it tight let's go through this bead and through the holly leaf like that squeeze them together and pull your thread and look at how they pop up like a little clutch of berries totes and orbs okay so I am gonna find a bead to go through look at this one Let that go through there like that and go through few more I what I'm doing is I'm taking my thread over to this one this hole and just securing it you don't want it flipping up and stuff but so where are we here so go through these two like that everything snug push those together push those together and just gently go through this one again this is not like to make it tight it's just to make sure it doesn't flip flop and I just have my thread here like that get everything really lovely it does it looks a bit off like the candle's not centered just move it with your finger that, that's better okay and just get this secured let me go through a few beads here let's do this and I will tie a knot in this one so find your thread bridge that wrap it around once and twice Pull that in, put your finger on it so it doesn't move anywhere. Snug it up. And then, which one are we coming out of? So let's pass through these two. This green thread might cover the red a little too. Go through here, like that. That's it. Just pull that so the knot's set nicely in there. And squeeze these guys together like that and we're going to tie this off or cut this off now yeah, this one oh i i used a thread so we need a new piece of thread for that where's my green thread now i had like my tail thread from my stop bead I weaved it in and cut it off I forgot that this design is different than this design this one I used a head pin to attach it um, but you do have to put some some type of bridge there for it to attach to there's really no way to put a jump ring in through a bead um, I've tried to do that. I find it just cracks the beads and then, you know, you're having to replace a bead in a design. So best way, something like earrings, you want to just use thread. And if you do a thread bridge like this for this, I didn't think of it till after I got this together. You could always put a little piece of French wire there I didn't really want any gold down on this part so that's why I left it as thread but those are all like you know valid choices that you can make so let's get this on here we could probably straighten this out actually that's fine okay so let me 
I'm going to go through a few beads and tie a knot. Oops. Leave a little tail there. So I'm going to grab a thread bridge here through these two beads here. Seems like there's a lot happening between those two beads. And my needle's bending now. Okay, well, let's see what we can get going here. Bring your thread around. Pull that through. And pull the other end. There. Stuck to my hand. So I'll go through this bead and we're going to come up through the next bead like that. We want to kind of line up our design. We can cut this off. There's a knot in there so it's holding it in. And we're going to come through this a few times so it's not a big deal. So now we need to be actually this might be so if you hold it up to see where the mini duo sit, we'll give you an idea how it's going to sit. So actually, I think that's it. I thought I might have to put it over a bit. I do want to be in the middle of these beads, though. So let's take a look. At, let's go through this one here. this and see how that sits it looks like it's off to the side so we need to let's we're going to use this bead here as our middle bead and that looks lined up with everything so we're going to keep coming up and through that this part here is super simple you're going to put your first uh, bead cap on in the up position so it's cupping your pearl like that like that then you're going to put the second bead cap on the down position again so it's cupping the pearl like that put that on get your little gold bead that's going to hold your thread now, remember, because we're putting earring wires that have a front and the earring itself has a front, make sure you come from the correct side. So here's what I'm threading on. There's my needle. So I'm going to come from this side. And I do believe uh, I might correct myself. Yeah, actually, we're going to come from the other side and I'll tell you why. Because if we are going to use that middle bead, we want to mirror what's happening on that bead. So our thread is coming out of the left of that bead. So we're going to create a loop in through the ear wire. We're going to go to the other side of that bead and we're going to do that a few times. So come through here. Like that. We're going to go through the gold bead through the ear wire. This is an unusual ear wire, so be careful where you put your needle if you have the same bead caps. I just ordered a bunch more of these bead caps. So these bead caps are from BB Craft. They're gold plated. They are beautiful and I think I got 50 of them for $5 maybe. So let me Hang on to your ear wire and pull everything down so it's snug. There. Take a look at where we're coming in here. Make sure I'm on the... Okay, so we're through the bead that's on the wreath. We're going to go back up 
through the bead cap, the pearl, the next bead cap, the embellish the little bead and the ear wire. Let everything through. Each time you go through it makes it a little snugger. If that's if that's a, a word snugger, that sounds so wrong. And go back down through everything. And now we can tie it off. So let's look around this side here. Through this bead. No, we're going to have to do it separately. Oh, and look, see, this is what I was saying. My needle has gone through the edge of that bead cap there. Pull everything through. And... Again, pull, hold on to the last thing you added to that strand and it will, it will make everything. Actually, I see a thread that's loose. So let's pull on your ear wire again, hold on to it and pull everything down there. You can see it's getting stiff. So it's in there. Good. So let's go through this, pass through a few beads now. We're going to create a knot and we'll be done there. So we'll find a thread bridge here. Go around twice. Pull it down in between those two beads. Put your finger there so that the loop doesn't jump over the bead. Snug it in and then go through a few beads. Hide your, your tail like that. Cut that off. I will be doing more of these with lighter colors. I feel like it's hard to see with the dark color when if you need help figuring out where to pass through certain beads. So there is the lovely, lovely earrings. Let's see what we have here. Oh, these turned out so lovely. Wow. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that. This was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we'll do, do some other ones. I can show you how to attach. A design like this with an ear. I mean, it's pretty straightforward with a head pin. But there you go. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.